Hi boys and gals, we're back with the second part of the tutorial series. Don't ask why I changed the scene. I lost inspiration. It just went, it was gone. Just like your dad. Last scene doesn't matter anyway, because this is just meant to teach you the basics of animation. We're not going to be doing smooth movements like you'll see for normal people. You're going to be going robotic. Like usually people will say, oh, don't make the animation too robotic. This time we actually want it to look robotic, but a stylized version of robotic, per se. I get more into detail on that later. But what I actually mean is you should remember setting your keyframes on the entire body first. And you just have to make the bones jiggle. Like you have to make the bones jiggle, but if you were to look at that fat rat from our childhood and see how he just jiggles around every time he makes a movement, that's what we're going to be learning today. Now this audio is a lot longer, it's like a meme, this audio is a lot longer, but for tutorial's sake, I decided to just shorten it so you guys won't be following along for too long. I don't want to make this tutorial like 40 minutes. Now what I like to get out of the way first is lip sync. So you just skip through the audio. It's best to have this on, scrubbing, because that means you can actually move through the audio and hear it just going frame by frame. Instead of you having to keep playing it and spamming the pause button, because as you can hear, that sounds ridiculous. My life is a moving joke. As I said before, you're gonna want to skip until there's barely audio. Like where it sounds like the character is about to speak, like about here, so I'm gonna go a frame behind. Click I to lock in its scale, to lock into its position. You know when you did it right when the bone is not moving, when it has this orangish, yellowish trail falling across it. Because that means you did it right and that means it won't have any movements. Then you move the mouth up by clicking space. You click R, X, that's what I like to do, so it can move along the X axis and it won't just start doing this out of random. R, X, and change it to a part that looks good. You should have something like this. Now you like to take these keyframes and turn them to linear. And then you'll have something like that and add a little the bounce I was talking to you about earlier. Jump. Have your original pose and jump two frames forward. Click R, X, and move it just a small bit up. Click I to add a keyframe. And click the previous bone. And duplicate it with Shift D. And move it across here. To make the bounce. Now we have a smooth bounce right here. And you just keep doing this, but you wouldn't want to make it bounce after every stop because that means it'll look odd if the person were to speak like instantly later. Here I'm gonna click this bone again with the yellow trail from before, so we know that it's still. You just keep doing this until you have the audio completely synced. Then once again, we're going to add the bounce by closing the bone. Looks like the jaws are closed, but not too close to the point where it's like this, because then the teeth will start clipping and it'll look awkward. 
two frames. Oops, slightly up a bit. Okay, doesn't matter if it's a bit off, hopefully. Everything, translation mode, linear. They should have myself a smooth playback of the jaw, hopefully. Are you ready to sing happy birthday? There we go. Now we have actual moving jaws and they actually look robotic. It actually looks like how a robot would perform and speak instead of it looking completely smooth human mouth. Gotcha. Life. Now we're gonna do the torso. Since the head, if you were to do that first, then it'll create some confusion. Just in case you want to change up your movements later, then you gotta redo the entire head's keyframe. So it's best to just start with the torso itself. But the torso, if you're trying to do like stylized and realistic movements, it's smart to just move it along the Z axis, since realistically that's the only angle that animatronics can move. Oh, besides the X axis, it can move like this, but it can't do this sort of because it will start bending the wires and stuff. So. They can do this, and they can do this, so I'm can just try and get as creative as possible with it, but just stick true to what I said before with the jiggles, like here. Now this does not need to have linear on, because the jaw actually moves linearly. That's not even a word. It moves in linear motion, so it's best to just have this on. Bleasier? Beezier? However the hell you say it. I'm gonna move it this way. Move two frames. Move it back to its original position a bit. I. Duplicate. Move it forward. That was some basic animatronic movement, but I think that's a little bit too slow. That's a bit too slow for my liking. You can choose to make the movements fast or slow, but mine tend to be fast-paced since not all robots move in a slow motion. Especially while reading people, they move pretty fast if you ask me. Track. You, you, you're not supposed to click location rotation and scale because that means if you're gonna make an accidental scale like oh that's not gonna do anything it will because you put a scale bone You know, you have your torso movement. You want to add a bit extra to it. Like, if you were to have, uh, if somebody were to be inside the spring lock suit, then yeah, you can make as much smooth, realistic movements as you want. But when no one's in there, like with normal animatronics and stuff, this still holds true. But if you're making a fast paced music video or something, then that's not such a good idea because it's gonna look a bit odd. Like, I know some good YouTubers that tend to do it pretty well, but when you're a beginner, it's Pretty hard if you ask me. Hey, head time. So I like to do the head last because the head always moves first on an animatronic. So I always gotta be careful with what I do. So if I were to just do this real quick. Oh, that actually won't do bad. <laughs> like, you gotta be careful when you do this stage, because if you were to move the head, if you move the torso, then you move the head, then the head's gonna look like it turns like 360 degrees or some crap. Now, if you have a favorite song that you're animating, then after you finish animating, you hate it because you listen to it so much, don't blame me because that's one of the worst things about being an animator.
Now you can make these ears jiggle if you like, because it's best to have as much movement as possible, but I'm a very, very, very lazy person, so I use this helpful thing over here called the Spring Bones add-on. Yahoo! Next, eyes. Now, if you're doing something important and you don't want your PC to crash, I suggest doing this helpful tip. Just drag this over here, go to the shader editor, and to get rid of this annoying thing, and click on the eyes, and click on the main texture, which is this, the image texture. Then you are free to close the little panel. Then if you're gonna go up here and click texture, then the eyes will show up and you don't need to go into material mode and ruin whatever you're doing. Now for flight view, I'm gonna hook up what the keys are again because a lot of people were asking what they were even though I put it in the video, so. This looks awful cross-eyed. It's always best to mark a keyframe at the last part when your character's head is about to move. So then, once it moves, you can just go to the part where it stops and move this. You know, animatronics automatically detect cameras, so sometimes they'll just look at the cameras from time to time. It's pretty terrifying, I had a nightmare about it once, just, yeah. So just make them sometimes look at the camera momentarily. Sometimes I like to do a little jiggle thing for the eyes as well. I don't have to, but I just do it, just because of detail. Look at that, it makes it a million times better. Now here will be a good point for him to blink, because this is dead space, like this entire part is dead space. We can just animate the camera to have some movement, but let's be honest, it's still kind of dead to just see an animatronic just stare at you with no movement whatsoever. Sometimes I like to move the bones a little bit since they're guaranteed to clip. After all that stress and pain, I finally animated the eyelids for the first time in my entire life. Give me a round of applause, please, I deserve it. Yeah, you should be able to move out of here, and you might have your first basic scene. Hey kids, are you ready to sing happy birthday? But we're not done yet, because we still gotta do camera movement. Now what I like to do is, you can go here, and just click I, and you can go here, again, but don't go to the shader editor this time, go to the graph editor. Now, I know it looks scary, but we won't need all these squiggly lines and trash. All we need is this, and to click N, so then this can appear. So we can click modifiers, 
we can click X location, add modifier, noise. This will make the camera have a seizure, but we don't need it to be this strong. So make 20.0 and click 0 0.3. It's too much. So you can lower this by how much you want. Yeah. So yeah, let's put this at an extremely high amount. It's basically just trial and error. You gotta play around with this so it can look just normal and it won't look like they have a little five-year-old holding the camera going crazy. Hey kids, are you ready to sing happy birthday? Like this. Then you click this. It's copy F modifier key. Just click this and go to the next one. Paste it. It makes our lives much easier. Hey kids, are you ready? Look at this, the realism is already collecting. Then you click Z and paste it there. Hey kids, are you ready to say happy birthday? Hey, there we go, that wasn't too bad. So now that we have the eyes animated and our entire scene already built up, then we basically just completed the basics of animation. <laughs> So, you made it! Congratulations! First you learned how to set up your basic scene in Blender, now you know how to animate robots in Blender. Next we're going to learn how to make thumbnails, so that when you render your videos and upload them to any social media website, they won't look weird if it were to be out of freeze frame and pause or something stupid. You can make a thumbnail to get more people to look at it and get interested and your click through rate will go up. So make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can help it out. And to get notifications so that you will never miss another upload, click the notification bell so that you can get it across your screen when the new video is uploaded. Yeah, subscribe. That's it for me. See you guys later.